So we now know enough about uh, quantum information to begin understanding some of the remarkable information processing capabilities of quantum systems. In this video I'm going to explain one of the simplest procedures for doing such information processing called superdense coding. What superdense coding is, is it's a procedure that allows someone to send uh, two classical bits to another party uh, using just a single qubit of communication. Now earlier in this course I explained that it was not possible to store more than a single bit uh, in one qubit, and this appears uh, to contradict that uh, statement. In fact, there is uh, no contradiction, just a need to be a little bit more precise about language. So what I'm going to do is I'll explain the superdense coding protocol, which is the main point of this video, and then I'll just add uh, some comments later uh, to explain what exactly that distinction is. Okay, so superdense coding starts uh, with a person running a laboratory, let's call her Eve, and in her laboratory uh, she has two quantum bits, which we're going to assume both start in the zero state. And she's going to apply a Hadamard gate to the first of them, and then do a controlled knot between uh, the two of them. And then she's going to send her qubits off, one of them will go off to another person in another laboratory, it could be on the other side of the world, it could be in the next room, it doesn't really matter, Alice, and the other qubit will go off to a third party called Bob. And the idea of the superdense coding, coding protocol is that Alice wants to communicate two classical bits over to Bob, and she's going to do it using this qubit uh, which she's been uh, sent uh, by Eve. So let's imagine that she has two classical bits and describe what the uh, what she's going to do in each case. Uh, if she has 0, 0 as her classical bits, she's just going to do absolutely nothing to the qubit in her possession, uh, the identity operation. If she has 0, 1, uh, the two classical bits, she's going to apply a NOT gate to the qubit in her uh, possession. If she has 1, 0, she's going to apply the Z gate, which I described in an earlier video. So just remember what the Z gate does. On the 0 state, it does nothing at all. And on the 1 state, uh, it just changes that phase. So it's minus 1. Um, and finally, if she has the classical bits 1, 1, she'll do a Z gate followed by uh, an X uh, gate. So once she's done this, once she's encoded uh, this information, this is the way she's doing it, once she's encoded the information in her qubit, she'll send it off uh, over to Bob. So Bob now has both qubits uh, in his uh, possession. And uh, he's going to do a few little things to extract the information. Uh, he's going to do a CNOT gate, and he's going to do a Hadamard. It's actually the exact reverse of what Eve did. Uh, and then at the end of the day, he's going to do a measurement of the two qubits, and it will turn out actually that he gets exactly uh, these values back. We'll go through and we'll do the analysis to see that. Uh, in a few uh, minutes. So it should be obvious how this is distinct from the situation I was talking about in an earlier video. Um, you know, it's not really exactly that Alice has got a, a, you know, a qubit uh, on its own that she's prepared in one of four possible states sent to Bob and Bob's extracting uh, uh, the information. No, Alice's qubit starts out entangled uh, with Bob's uh, qubit because of this prior interaction which Eve has orchestrated. And you know, it's only uh, with that entangled state that it's possible to store the two bits of classical information. In fact, you, so you can prove that if Alice uh, starts out with a qubit which is not entangled with the rest of the world, the most information she can store on it is just one classical bit. And uh, it also turns out that you can prove that if, if she is entangled with the rest of the world, the absolute maximum amount of information she can store is two classical bits. So this protocol is in some sense optimal. In fact, uh, all sorts of intermediate uh, situations have also uh, been studied, but I won't get into uh, that uh, just right now. 
All right, let's go through and actually analyze uh, what goes on. So we start out with the zero zero state. We apply Eve applies the Hadamard uh, gate. So the zero gets taken to the superposition of zero and one, and the, the other zero doesn't change. So we end up with zero zero plus one zero all over root two. But I'm going to omit the, all the root twos because they they just get well they get in the way, frankly. Uh, and I'm also going to continue to omit the ket notation. So this is really the state 0, 0, plus 1, 0 over root 2. Um, all right, the next thing we do is we apply this controlled not uh, gate. So uh, here this uh, isn't affected because the control bit is set to 0. The control bit here is set to 1, so the second one gets flipped. So it's 0, 0, plus 1, 1. So the four outcomes uh, up here depending on which of these yeah, four possibilities Alice takes up. Well, the first one, she does nothing at all, so the state doesn't change. I should say, by the way, you know, I'm, I'm writing, this is a joint state of you know, Alice's qubit and Bob's qubit here. I've written it as though it you know, both belong to Alice, but, but that's not, not the case. Okay, so ne then she applies, if she has the 0, 1 classical uh, bits, she applies uh, the not gate to the qubit, the first qubit, which is the one in her possession, 1, 0, plus 0, 1, and it gets flipped around. Uh, if she applies the Z gate, well, the 0 isn't changed, but we pick up a minus because of the 1. And uh, if we do the Z gate followed by the X gate, well, it's like doing this, uh, which is just the Z gate followed by flipping the, f the first bit, so we end up with 1, 0, minus 1, 1. So now the qubit comes down here to Bob. Bob has both the qubits in his possession at this point. And uh, with both the qubits in his uh, possession, uh, he's able to do these joint uh, manipulations uh, on you know, whichever of these four states uh, he has. So let's run through and see what happens in each case. So we apply a C0 to this first state. Uh, we end up with 0, 0, plus 1, 0. We flipped that bit because the control is set. We end up with 1, 1, plus 0, 1. We end up with 0, 0, minus 1, 0. We get 1, 1, a flip, minus 1, 0, a flip again. And now we have to do a Hadamard gate on the first of these two qubits. Uh, and uh, look, uh, you know, you can go through and actually verify. Um, you know, in this particular case, for example, you see that the second qubit is in the state 0. So the first qubit is just in the state 0 plus 1. You apply the Hadamard, you get the state 0. Um, so it's 0, 0 uh, at this point. Uh, this one turns out, again, you just uh, run through, do the calculation, uh, you get the state 0, 1. This one, you get the state 1, 0. And this one is a little bit different. Uh, you actually, if you, you run the calculation, get the state uh, minus one, one. Right, there is a phase factor. Okay, but when you do the measurements, well, uh, you know, on these uh, computational basis states, remember these are computational basis states, um, you end up with, obviously in this case, you get zero, zero with probability one. In this case, you get zero, one with probability one, which is what you know, Alice meant to send in both cases. Here you get one, zero with probability one, which is what Alice meant to send. And in the final case, you actually get, uh, you know, the probability of getting the 1-1 one, one outcome is just minus 1 squared, the amplitude squared, which is 1. So you definitely get 1-1, one, one, which is again uh, correct. So this is a way in which Alice can, you know, by sending just a single qubit, albeit one which is you know, pre-entangled, can communicate two classical bits of information over to, to uh, Bob. So I've gone through this in a lot of detail. It's not complicated, but there is a lot of detail. It's possible, in fact, to think in much bigger sort of chunks about what's going on, thinking at a higher level of abstraction, and that's what an expert would do. So an expert wouldn't really sort of start with all this detail. An expert would just say, you know, Eve prepares the state 0, 0 plus 1, 1 in her laboratory, sends one qubit off to Alice. Right, so that's, we've kind of abstracted away all of these details just in terms of state preparation. Sends the qubit off to Alice, who does her thing, and we end up with these four states uh, in uh, one of these four states back in Bob's possession after Alice has communicated her qubit on. And then again, all of this 
circuit is really about figuring out which one of these four states you have. And again, an expert actually can look at these four states and just say, oh, well, there is a procedure um, uh, for distinguishing between uh, the four of them. Again, there's sort of a higher level way of looking at that in much the same way as you can just abstract away to this 0, 0, plus 1, 1. Um, preparation. And so over the next few videos we'll spend uh, some time coming to a deeper understanding um, of both these parts of the protocol so that we can sort of have that higher level uh, picture. We'll have a deeper understanding of super dense coding and it will also uh, help us prepare to understand uh, things like quantum teleportation. One final comment, uh, kind of remarkable, this whole protocol which really is fundamentally pretty simple, wasn't discovered until 1992 uh, by uh, Charles Bennett and Stephen Wiesner. And uh, that's quite remarkable when you think that quantum mechanics was discovered in the 1920s. So it took almost 70 or so years to discover the superdense coding uh, protocol. It's, you know, despite its relative simplicity, it's not an obvious uh, thing and you can learn quite a bit uh, by thinking about it in some depth. Okay, so as I said, the next few videos, we're going to be looking to deepen our understanding um, of this, and we're going to start with this initial preparation stage. Uh, in particular, in the next video, we're going to you know, analyze this preparation of uh, the Bell state, that, that entangled state that they shared, um, and try and understand in a bit more detail uh, why that was possible.